Now, normally I would never give a feral, ill-tempered electric death Pokemon to a small child. But I kind of want you out of here so I can get a crack at the town MILF. What did you just say? Gotta catch them all! Hey, little buddy, want a ride? Pikachu! Yeah, whatever! Did you know that the creator of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri, actually based the game on a pseudo-sport that's been played in Japan for thousands of years? Where children would find wild bugs, mostly beetles, and have them fight each other. Ironic that the worldwide phenomenon's roots come from such a cheap form of entertainment. Especially since they slap the shit on every banal piece of merchandise they could think of in order to drain cash faster than a maxed out gold bat using leech life. Oh sure, they made a really good card game. But aside from that one accomplishment, you have hundreds of other products designed to trick kids and parents, mostly parents, into buying the shit just because it's Pokemon. That's where these come in. I present to you the Pokemon Battling Coins game. Little coins with Pokemon on them that you spin to battle and they come in CD cases. I didn't keep any of the cases, but I still have the coins. I picked these stupid things up at a K&B toy store about a decade ago. But even at the height of Pokemon Madness, they couldn't move these things. I got them for like a buck a pop. And even then, I look back knowing I got swindled. So where do we begin? Well, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I gotta start with false advertising. It says right on the packages that these are holographic coins. <laughs> these are not holographic images. This is a hologram. This is a hologram. This is not a hologram. This is just shiny under not so shiny. Furthermore, there are no holographic Pokemon trading cards. These are just regular matted images on top of stock holographic wallpaper. Same thing with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. In fact, the only truly holographic cards I've ever seen would be in the Harry Potter trading card game. But that's for another day. Anyway, the gameplay is what the title implies. You spin the coins on a smooth surface and compare the sides to see which action trumps the other. Each player starts with a stack of three or six Pokemon coins. It really doesn't matter, just as long as both sides have an equal amount, and you don't show the other player your Pokémon. Each player then sets out one Pokémon onto the battlefield. Once a player sets a Pokémon out, it cannot leave the field until it is defeated or swapped out with a special item. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now there are four types of sections on these coins. The first, most important and most common, is the number section. Pretty straightforward. If both coins land on a number, the highest wins. If it's a tie, then it's a respin. Then you have special moves. Because what's Pokemon without special moves? First, there's Hypnosis, Sing, and Sleep. These specials make your opponent set the coin to its lowest number. You now have one free spin to try and beat that number. If you land on that special move again, then you get another free spin. Then there's Bind, Fury, and Wrap. With this move, your opponent stays on the same wedge that they spin, and you now have three spins to try and beat that number. If you can't beat it in three spins, or if your coin doesn't have a number higher than your opponent's section, then it's an instant knockout for that coin. Infusion and Poison will send your opponent's coin back to the coin stack. If this is a player's last coin, then it's an instant knockout and you win. Much like in the game, with Boom, both coins get knocked out. Now, none of my coins have Dream Eater or Transform, which sucks because they're the best attacks. Transform allows you to use the highest number on your opponent's coin as your attack, and Dream Eater knocks out your opponent while reviving one of your knocked out coins. Special moves are cool, but you can get around them easily with items. If you spin or land on an item, not only do you ignore numbers and special moves, you get a special action. A Pokeball will let you swap out your current coin for any other coin in your active roster. A potion will revive one of your knocked out coins, and a times two means if you land on a number your next spin, your attack is doubled. Finally, there is the instant knockout panel. 
It's a constant theme of all incarnations of Pokemon that one type will naturally have advantage over the other. Water beats fire, plant beats rock, etc. If a coin should land on this section, and your opponent's coin matches any of the colors represented on it, then it's an instant knockout and trumps even special moves and items. Sounds simple enough, right? Yeah, but there's this unfortunate glitch in the coins that becomes the biggest flaw of the gameplay. What happens if either one of the coins lands on a line? Sounds like a trifle, right? I mean, the line is only like a micrometer wide. Well, it happens more than you think. Let's look at it this way. Each coin has at least four or five sections, and those are divided up by four or five lines. Let's look at this example. You have five sections and five lines on one coin, and you have four sections and four lines on the other. That means out of a possible 18 outcomes, nine of them are going to include a line. That's 50% of gameplay. Okay, I know mathematically that's a gross exaggeration, but it happens often enough. Plus it takes forever for these damn things to stop spinning sometimes. Once the makers realized this, they added this rule. Look at both sections on the borders of the line. If both the sections would have resulted in a knockout, the coin is knocked out. If not, respin. Sounds like a okay solution, right? Okay, until you end up trying to figure out what trumps what. What happens if I have one coin that has a special attack and one coin has an item? Are both of those negated? Do both of those count? 50%. Half a gameplay is now spent debating over a stupid coin game. Time you could be spending playing the actual Pokemon games. Well, I guess these things might be worth something someday. After all, it's always the stuff that no one wanted that ends up becoming rare. And as for the quality, it's pretty high end. I think they might be brass, but they were made in China back in 1999, so who knows what they could be. If it is brass, no wonder they tarnish like hell. Especially when you're spending them all the time on a dirty table. But I think they would clean up nicely with some Pokemon brand silverware polish. Although the Pokemon are stock images from a catalog, they look pretty good too. But the image quality seems to decrease the more details a Pokemon has. My favorite is Megamite. Not because it's particularly strong or anything. In fact, it's one of the weakest in the set. No, what I like about this coin is Magnemite's eye is perfectly centered in the coin. So when you spin it, it's like it's looking at you, staring at you, with one blinkless eye, a daunting witness to your every action, and possibly your every thought. Staring, staring, straight into your soul. So what's the conclusion on Poke Coins? While well, I think 50% of gameplay wasted counts as broken, and it's completely unnecessary, Pokemon started out as one of the most innovative, expansive, and fun RPGs ever. You might as well be buffing stats on Pokemon you can actually get stronger, or trying to catch new ones that won't cost you anything. And if your batteries are dead, the Pokemon trading card game is a much better alternative. So now how would I try to improve this game? Make a new rule that says when it lands on a line, let the player choose which attack it uses. For example, let's say this Raticate and this Nidorang fight. Raticate lands on a 60, but Nidorang lands on a line between 20 and a potion. Well, if it's up to the player, you choose the potion. The operating word being choose. You know, choosing your attack, like in Pokemon. Then you've just settled a potentially buzz-killing argument. Player 2 is happy because he revived a Pokemon, and Player 1 isn't bitter because he knows it's just a matter of time before he lands on a line and gets to make a winning move. You would settle more arguments, make the gameplay much faster, and add a much needed sense of strategy to the game. And that's the Pokemon Battling Coins game. An odd little fossil from the time when Pokemon ruled the world. Sadly though, unlike the video and card game, this never caught on and never evolved and died out as soon as it appeared. 
Anyway, that's enough for this episode of Cheap Damage. See you next round. Great performance! And remarkable! First rate all the way! You don't hear Nurse Joy say first rate all that often, so when you do, it's a rave!